the president of Planned Parenthood. Hello, Washington. You are a beautiful sight. It is an honor to be here on behalf of the one in five women in America who've been to Planned Parenthood for health care. I wish every single one of them could see you. You are a beautiful sight, or for some folks in Congress, a terrifying one. We're here today to thank generations of organizers and troublemakers and hell raisers who formed secret sisterhoods, who opened Planned Parenthood health centers in their communities and demanded the right to control their own bodies. And today we're here to deliver a message. We're not going to take this lying down. And we will not go back. For the majority of people in this country, Planned Parenthood is not the problem. We're the solution. We've been part of the American country, the fabric of America for 100 years. And my pledge today is our doors stay open. Now is the time for us to link arms together for the right of working women to earn a living wage for the right of immigrant families to live without fear, for the right of mothers everywhere to raise families, uh, with, to, to raise families in safe communities with clean air and clean drinking water, including in Flint, Michigan. And we're here for the right to live openly no matter who you are or who you love, no matter what. And you better believe we're here to fight for reproductive rights, including access to safe and legal abortion. Because to expand on a historic quote by my heroine and friend Hillary Clinton, a woman who knows a little something about never giving up, reproductive rights are human rights. You need to know that starting this week, Congress is going to be moving quickly to try to pass restrictions on reproductive access, and we cannot let them. You need to call your member of Congress, call your senator, and say, we will not go back. One of us can be dismissed, two of us can be ignored, but together, we are a movement, and we are unstoppable. alongside inspiring leaders like the woman standing next to me. Please welcome my friend Kiera Johnson, Executive Director of URGE, Unite for Reproductive and Gender Equity. I see some nasty women out there. So nasty. I see some nasty boys out there too. Janet would be so proud. My name is Kiera, and I'm the ED of Unite for Reproductive and Gender Equity. And I work with young people, and I am unapologetically abortion positive. That's not the only reason I'm here with you today. I want to talk to the young people in the crowd. Those live streaming right now on Twitter and on Facebook, I want to say to you, thank you. For the young people who continue to be on the front lines and in the streets, and who showed up at the polls and voted for equity, justice, and a better country. Thank you for forcing us to see the humanity at Standing Rock. Thank you. Thank you for reminding the world that black lives matter. Thank you for letting us be in on the dreamer's dream. Thank you for boldly supporting the right to safe, legal, and accessible abortion in your states and nationally. Thank you for demanding to be seen, demanding to be heard, and demanding control of your destiny. But we know if someone else controls your body, it is them 
and not you that controls your destiny. State-sanctioned violence fueled by racism, sexism, and xenophobia, building walls at our borders, constructing jails in our communities, racial profiling, Muslim registries, funding cuts for poor families, restricting health care based on gender, and denying people the right to control how, when, and with who to build their families. These are all attempts to control us. Not some of us, but all of us. Donald Trump is the president. Y'all, there's a million of y'all out here. Y'all should say boo louder. But the good news is he's working for us now. That means he needs to hear from us, not just today, but tomorrow and every day of his presidency. We will not consent to your violence, Mr. Trump. We refuse to let politicians chart our destinies and steal our dignity. We will stand together in solidarity and work collectively for economic security, racial justice, reproductive freedom, and gender equity for all. Thank you.
Usain Bolt. Um, I have another announcement. Vanessa Tijerina um, has been separated from Amos Gonzalez, and you can reunite over on this side of the stage, stage left. Vanessa Tijerina and Amos Gonzalez, please reunite on stage left. That would get you. <laughs> and when I walked out those gates of prison, I made a promise to those women who are our friends, our neighbors, our sisters, that I would do all that I could do to tell their story, tell their narratives, and to tell their truths. So today, in solidarity as inmates, 86G0206, I call into this moment, into this movement, Judy Clark, Teresa Holland, Pamela Smart, Rosalind Smith. I call into this moment, Alice Johnson, Sandra Rucker, Michelle West. I call into this moment, this movement, all those women who have been overlooked marginalized, sexualized, dehumanized, and silenced. Today, we march in solidarity to be their voice. We are their voice. We are changing that narrative today. We are changing what has been said and used to denigrate and to vilify and to silence them. Today, we march to humanize women and every woman and girl in our country and across the world. Today, you march alongside those of us from the Women in Justice Project, Eve Enslin, One Billion Rising and V-Day, the Center for Justice, and the National Council for Incarcerated and Formerly Incarcerated Women and Girls. Join us. Join us. As we continue to march and walk, let's walk in our greatness because we are beautiful, we are amazing, and we are not silent anymore. Today, today, we, all of 
us. My voice, your voice, our voice is one voice. One voice. And together, that voice is powerful. My point in the history of our country. I believe this is a moment in time that is a pivotal moment in the history of our country. I think of this as being a moment in time similar to that moment in time when my parents met when they were active in the civil rights movement as students at the University of California, Berkeley in the 1960s. It's a moment in time that is similar to a moment in time many of us have experienced in our personal lives. You know, when that circumstance and situation required us to look in a mirror, and with furrowed brow, we asked the question, who are we? This is that moment in time for our country, where we are collectively looking in a mirror, and with furrowed brow, asking this question, who are we? And ladies and gentlemen, I believe the answer is a good one. Imperfect though we may be, I believe we are a great country. And part of what makes us great is we are a nation that was founded on certain ideals founded on the ideals that were spoken in 1776, that we are all and should be treated as equals. Founded on the ideals that guarantee every person's right 
to worship freely without intrusion, founded on ideals where our immigrant communities represent the heart and soul of what it means to be an American. And when I look out at this incredible crowd today, I know one thing. Even if you're not sitting in the White House, even if you are not a member of the United States Congress, even if you don't run a big corporate super PAC, you have the power. And we, the people, have the power. And there is nothing more powerful than a group of determined sisters marching alongside with their partners and their determined sons and brothers and fathers standing up for what we know is right. And here's the thing. We know that it is right for this nation to prioritize women's issues. Now here's what I'm talking about in terms of women's issues. So when I was first elected district attorney in San Francisco, or attorney general of California, or a United States senator from the state of California, in, in each of those positions, I was elected as the first woman or the first woman of color. And folks would come up to me and they'd say, Kamala, talk to us about women's issues. And I'd look at them and I'd say, I'm so glad you want to talk about the economy. I'd say, great, let's talk about the economy because that's a woman's issue. I'd say, you want to talk about women's issues? Let's talk about national security. You want to talk about women's issues? That's fantastic. Let's talk about health care. Let's talk about education. Let's talk about criminal justice reform. Let's talk about climate change. 